Guys, what's going on? My name is Ryan. I trade ETFs and I like to make videos of the technical analysis that I'm seeing in the markets today. So we are going to look at SPY. Spider S&P 500 ETF tracks the market right now. And uh, we're seeing some interesting things here in the market this week. So we are here on the weekly and I've drawn this channel, this uptrend channel right here has been supporting and resisting the price very well over the last, um, this chart goes all the way back to, it looks like 2009 when the market started running higher. And if you're into Elliott Waves, I know some people are. Uh, Elliott Waves differ from person to person uh, ever so slightly. Uh, it's kind of subjective, but this is the Elliott Wave that I'm seeing. I see an impulse wave up, correction, third wave, correction, and I think that we are on our fifth wave right now. Uh, what's interesting is on the weekly view, we have this divergence here. I see our CCI, our Commodity Channel Index, has been moving and making lower lows. That means less volume is coming in. We can see this on the moving average of our volume. It's been slowly turning down while price makes higher highs. This is a regular divergence on the CCI, and let's go to the daily. On the daily, I've got another small Elliott wave here for us. We can see that this was our previous on the weekly, our third leg, our correction, and our fifth wave. Uh, on our fifth wave here, I see kind of the same pattern that we saw on the weekly, but condensed in this fifth wave. We have, you know, this kind of hump here, this one, two, three, four, and I think that uh, five is going to be up here. This is also a smaller channel that I have us in um, than previously. And I guess I have a couple notes down here, some things to note. So recently, London and Europe have been displaying topping action, gold and silver markets indicating a downside resolution, meaning that they will go higher. The gold-silver ratio ind indicating a credit contraction, decreasing credit availability, credit spreads are widening, the yield curve is flattening, commodities resolving to new all-time lows, the speculative sector of the stock market is losing conviction, the stock market's speculative sector is technology, QQQ. There's been a psychological shift from growth to value, and all of these market actions are consistent with models presented which is uh, formulated from the past five credit cycles that the market has seen. So on average, bear markets occur every 3.5 years. They last on average 15 months. Corrections occur on average once a year, and they last on average. And so st statistically, when are we due for a bear market? Now, according to Edwards Jones, the last one began nearly eight years ago, twice the post-1900 average duration between bear markets. The last real correction in the S&P was in 2011, when a one-two punch of European debt fears and Congress is nearly shutting down the government before cutting federal spending with unemployment still at 9% caused a 21.6% drop in the S&P between May and October. Uh, what this is saying is that we are on a uh, eight-year bull market, and this is consistent with uh, my previous note where bear markets occur on every 3.5 years, and so we are double the average bull run right now. This isn't an indication that you should short the market. It's just an indication that you should be aware of what's happening right now because statistically, we're due. I have a couple more divergences here on the daily chart. Here with the RSI, Relative Strength Index, we see our RSI peaking out here at about uh, 77, and we have not breached that 77. We've continued to go downwards while price goes upwards. And in our CCI, we see a lack of buying volume coming in, and uh, we see higher prices. This red line here is long-term support. Uh, we have it touching down here, touching here, here, and we just touched it again this week. One last thing I wanted to note on the daily is that we want our RSI to stay above 50 here. I marked this in this light blue line here, and if we stay above 50, we should be A-OK. -okay. So I'll be watching the 50 level in the coming days and weeks. So these blue lines up above here mark Fibonacci levels. Looks like we reached our 161.4% Fib level, uh, and we came back down to test our previous 121.7 Fibonacci level. This 127, 121.7 Fibonacci level is important because it also coincides with our previous breakout. We got rejected once, we got rejected twice, and then we finally broke through. We retested, and then we went higher, finally getting stuck up here on the 1.614. We rolled over a bit, and we came back down and tested this previous breakout level, as well as this uh, long-term red line support we have going on here, and it held up very well. And uh, I marked it here as a must-hold level, and we had a preview of it with our RSI turning down while price was flat to moving higher. And from that, let's see what we have on the one hour. On the one hour, I think this is going back to my prediction from last week. Um, looks like I thought I saw a head and shoulders, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and reject that idea. I mean, it might be a head and shoulders here with our neckline coming through. Uh, but since price moved sideways so much and then took a steep drop down, uh, it's not so pretty a picture as it was when it was making this formation right here. So I'm going to delete these, I'm gonna revisit my price predictions. That was price would move up go back down to our support level, and then move up higher. 
So it looks like that turned out pretty well, and we are waiting for the follow through higher right now. And finally, here on the 15 minute, I had this box indicating, I haven't looked at this since last week, but I had this box indicating a buy target, and um, it looks like I did my last analysis when we were right about here. I saw this channel and uh, cloned it over here. This was my predicted price path, thought we were going to move up, drop down, get supported by this previous uh, support line on our way down, and bounce up higher, and then finally reach our must hold level, break out, and then come back to retest this previous support zone. We didn't do quite that, however, it's kind of interesting to see that we did spike, we did fall, we did have this little spike again, we did fall a lot, we did have this spike, and then we came to my ultimate destination. And uh, yeah, I'm very wary on the market right now. If at any point we decide to lose this red line or this blue line, they kind of coincide with each other. But for example, if we move up here and then we break through this line, that would be a bearish signal. It just so happened that they both converged on this level as well as the Fibonacci 50% retrace. So right now, I think that we did our corrective move and we are ready to move higher on smaller timeframes. I don't see any divergences of note. So for a short-term prediction, I am bullish. I think that we hit our bottom, we bounced significantly. Uh, we could see a retest of this bottom, but then I do have a bull bias in the short term. As far as the medium term goes, it's unclear whether or not we are going to hold these prices and continue to move higher. And on a longer term perspective, I am bullish still. I think we have uh, anywhere from 12 to 18 months more worth of bullish activity. Anyways, that's been my sector update for SPY, the Spider S&P 500 ETF. And if you liked my video, please like and subscribe. These videos take me a long time to make and I appreciate you. All right, have a good week. Bye-bye.